Okay, so it's Monday, and uh, I'm going to share a comment. Now, on the weekend, I shared a couple, um, I call them blurbs of truth, but from the unsearchable riches, of course, uh, on the sovereignty of God and uh, God as the potter making vessels of honor and dishonor out of the same lump of clay. And I got a great comment from Norman LaBelle, our brother, um, and I'm going to share it with you. I printed it off because I can't read it on my phone, just too small, and I'd have to go like this. So, um, <clears throat> not quite like that, but anyway, the letters and writing is too small on my phone. So, I'm going to share this beautiful comment, and it's complimentary to what I was sharing on the weekend. And uh, as God being the potter of the whole lump of clay, um, it's initially marred in the potter's hand, but he reforms and remakes it. He does this on a national level as well, not just an individual level. And this is what the comment's all about. It's from that national perspective, especially with the House of Israel. For the upcoming millennial kingdom, it's going to be a necessary thing that he breaks it to that point and remakes that whole nation. <clears throat> okay, so here's a comment. It reveals how our heavenly potter not only works his formidable needing power to shape individuals, but he does so on a national level also for honor and dishonor, for use, as he ultimately wills for his purpose. Paul is not, is not the only one in scripture that enlightens us to this regard. Jeremiah does so as well. See Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11. We see our potter has been at work spinning his potter's wheel since Adam's formation those many thousand years ago. In the case of Jeremiah, we see an example wherein God can do the same with an entire nation, and thus he can with any nation he pleases. The word has been unto Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, okay, this is the passage, rise, and you have gone down to the potter's house, and there I cause you to hear my words. Notice, I cause you to hear my words. This is God causing, cause, cause absolutely and relatively, the effect is listening <clears throat> or hearing the words. Okay. And I go down to the potter's house, and lo, he is doing a work on the stones, and marred is the vessel of dishonor that he is making as clay in the hand of the potter. And he has turned and he makes another vessel from the same kneading as it was right in the eyes of the potter to make. <clears throat> and there is a word of Yahweh to me saying, as this potter am I not able to do to you, <clears throat> O house of Israel. An affirmation of Yahweh, lo, as clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So that's the whole nation of Israel being changed and being remade in the hands of the potter. The moment I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to break down and to destroy. And then that nation has turned from its evil because I've spoken against it. Then I have repented or changed my mind of the evil that I thought to do to it. So repentance, as far as God is concerned, is a change of mind. And that's what we have today. If we can understand that as a believer, God changes our mind. So he gives repentance as a gift. And it is a gift, a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of walk, a change of way. This is God giving it um, as the great potter. <clears throat> the experiences that we have are so necessary for that purpose. <clears throat> Okay, and the moment I speak concerning the nation and concerning kingdom to build and to plant, and it has done the evil thing in mine eyes, so as not to hearken to my voice, then I have repented of that of the good that I have spoken of doing to it. So, and now speak, I pray you, unto men of Judah and against inhabitants, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said Yahweh. 
Lo, I am framing against you evil and devising against you a device. Turn back, I pray you, each from his evil way and amend your ways and your doings. As we can see from the above text, God molds nations as well. They are all putty in his hands. This is an example concerning Israel, but the same can very well be applied to the Philistines, Israel's sworn enemy. In God's, in God's multifarious wisdom, hasn't the potter not done the same with Russia or Gog and Magog and his allied friends, Turkey, Iran, Ethiopia, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Ezekiel 38 and 39. God formed each of the 70 nations since the dispersion that occurred at the infamous Tower of Babel. Every one of them is working to accomplish God's overall sovereign plan for all mankind. What a great God we have. Awesome, isn't it? So yes, it is awesome. Thank you, Norman, for sharing this comment. And I'm sharing it with, uh, with all you guys because this is important stuff. And you know, I think about God sending an operation of deception for them to believe the lie. This is coming. Um, and it's going to be an operation of deception. So deceptive that it could very well deceive the very elect. But that, I do not believe, refers to the members of the body of Christ. <clears throat> I believe we'll be extricated before that, before even the peace is brought in. If you're watching Peter Mayer, he is a really good teacher, and he's been expounding on our enormous expectation. And uh, it's they're very good videos. So definitely go watch them. Um, so for this Monday, I thank you for tuning in and listening. And I say grace and peace from Canada.